In our first example of a charge distribution, we want to find the electric field. We have a loop that is centered around the x-axis and we want to know the electric field at some point that we're going to call x from the origin. So x is a value that we're going to give uh, that we want to know. The loop has a radius of a and we assume or we're going to make the charge Q some value is distributed evenly along this loop. So if we were to take in all the little itty bitty parts and add them all up it would come up to some value of Q. Now let's look at this drawing and see what we can come up with. So I have some little differential length here and that differential length is going to contain some differential charge. And if I draw a vector from that differential length through my point P, there's going to be some distance R from the differential length to this point P and this vector can be separated into components. I'll have an X component and a Y component. Now if I look at a differential length completely opposite on the loop, the corresponding differential length at the bottom, I'm going to draw my vector and it's going to give me an X component and a Y component and both of these are going to make the same measure of angle theta with the X axis and if the charge is linearly distributed meaning that DQ is going to be the same here we'll have same DL it's going to correspond to the same DQ then that means that these two vectors from those differential lengths are equal and then that would mean that the y vectors are equal and this since they're pointing in opposite directions they cancel and this means that we will multiply differential electric field by cosine of theta. So let's write our differential electric field here and do it in black here. So our differential electric field is going to equal 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dq over r squared times the cosine of theta. Okay, now I need to find my differential charge. So differential charge, if this is a relationship, differential charge to dq Q is distributed along the whole length of this loop. So the whole length is equal to, well, that's just the circumference. So it's 2 pi times the radius A. So I can write the differential length the part to the whole, the whole part is 2 pi a, is equal to dq over the total. So think about this, top part is, are the parts, just the little itty bitty parts there, 
and the bottom is the whole. The two fractions have to match. So if I solve for dq, that's just going to be q times differential length over 2 pi times a. Now let's look at r. r is the length from this differential length to the point P and it makes up this triangle. It's a right triangle and I, X is going to be given to me in the problem to be able to find the electric field. So now I need to know, and A will be given to me, so I need to know what this R will be. Well that's easy. It's just Pythagorean theorem square root of X squared plus A squared So now I know R. And this cosine of theta, I really don't want to have to deal with theta because I'd have to calculate theta knowing the value of x and I'd have to do a and I'd have to do a bunch of extra calculations. and. I really would like to have to not have to calculate cosine all the time. So I can use what is listed here and I know that the cosine of theta is just equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse and that's just going to be, well, x is my adjacent and my hypotenuse is the square root of x squared plus a squared. And now all I have to do is put everything back into this differential electric field. So I'm going to have differential electric field is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and then I will have substitute in for dq is going to be q times differential length over 2 pi a and I don't want to forget r squared so that's going to be square root x squared plus a squared squared and now I'm going to have my cosine it's going to be x times the square root of x squared plus a squared And I can simplify this down. I don't need to put the 1 in there. I'm going to rearrange this top part. So the top is going to be q times x over, and on the bottom I've got 4 pi epsilon naught, 2 pi a. I have this square root squared but then I have another square root here so I can write that as a square root x squared plus a squared cubed times the differential length. And now I need to think about what are constants and what are not constants. Well q is going to be a constant X is going to be constant because I'm going to give that in the problem when I want to find the length or the distance away from the loop. Uh, 4 pi epsilon naught, 2 pi a is a constant, so that means the square root of x squared plus a squared can be considered a constant. And the only thing that I have is this differential length that I need to integrate. So my electric 
field is going to be q x divided by 4 pi epsilon naught 2 pi a square root x squared plus a squared cubed integral of DL. And now I'm just integrating this length. So if I start at one point I can say zero and integrate all the way around I'm going to be integrating a distance of 2 pi a. So that leaves me with qx over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 pi a square root x squared plus a squared cubed. And now this integral, well, dl, integral of dl is just l, with the limits from 0 to 2 pi a. So when I do that, it just gives me a 2 pi a over here. All right, and now the 2 pi a's go away, and that just leaves me with qx over 4 pi epsilon naught times square root x squared plus a squared cubed. Let me compact that over just a little bit more. Reduce the size just a smidgen. Okay, so that is the value of the electric field. And now we can make this as a function, electric field as a function of x to let us know that we can put whatever x value we want in here. We'll know q, we'll know a based on the problem. I can calculate for x what it is. So that's along the x-axis here. It doesn't apply to above or below the x-axis, only on the x-axis. Now let's play a little game with this. What happens if x is much larger than a? Well, if that's the case, then we can basically take a squared out of the square root, and I would get the electric field in terms of x is equal to qx over 4 pi epsilon naught and then I'll have x the square root of x squared cubed. Well square root of x squared is just x and I'm going to cube that that's going to be x cubed in the bottom but then I have an x at the top, so that's just going to simplify to q over 4 pi epsilon naught x squared. And this form is just the electric field for a point charge.
that just tells us that at a far distance that loop is going to look like a point charge like a single charge like the loop disappears at a very large distance away now what happens if x is equal to zero well if x is equal to zero e to the x is going to be equal to zero because there's an x at the top which means that there is no electric field at the origin it all cancels out because everything is in equilibrium so this is the derivation of the loop this is an important formula to know because we're going to use that here pretty shortly uh, we'll need this for another problem that we're going to do